Hi Luca from LGM Photography here and in this video I want to do a review on the Lower Pro uh, Pro Runner 350W. Now the bag is as you can see a pretty big bag. Um, okay so that's the front side and the back where you have the two slides. Now this bag is too big to take it with you for security, so that's something to know. Uh, if you were traveling with this bag, you probably have to go for the smaller side, uh, which I also have and which I will do a review uh, next time. Now the outside of the bag, so first to the front, we've got two slangs here. Now, this attachment comes with a little pocket here where you can attach the, the tripod this way. I've uh, rarely used it. When you put the bag on, which I will demonstrate now, it's big, it's a big bag and it goes far back so it can be a bit tricky to carry it around, especially in crowded areas. So having a tripod on top of it, on top of this, you know, it can be a bit of a nightmare, but it can be done if you want to. Uh, now, the front has two pockets. The first one is a very small one where you can put uh, your documents, paper, passport. Uh, I use it for the cable um, to connect the iPad to it. So we'll put this on the side for now. The other pocket, which is a little bigger, is actually it does the all front of it so gaffer tape uh, always be needed I've got my double strap here and some plastic bag again can be on the if you need to leave on the floor if you need to collect your you know, protect your equipment just in case uh, I sometimes need it so it is always good to have with you uh, also, in this pocket, you have space, little pockets here. Uh, so, it can be handy. You can put a pen, you can put uh, cleaning uh, pens, mobile phone, anything you like. Another little bigger pocket here where I have my oh, Nikon D300S model, which was my old camera. Uh, I've actually sold the camera but never found the manual, so here it is. Which show that I haven't really looked at the bag before this review. So this is the front of the bag. Now, sides of the bag, you will find that there is two little uh, places where you could probably attach, uh, I don't know, just something. Uh, never used it myself, but it, it can be handy. There is also a very handy uh, Link so you could carry the bag this way, uh, bearing in mind that it's going to be heavy depending on what you have here. Uh, a nice little pocket here for a bottle of water, uh, some drink, uh, snack, whatever you want. Uh, I wouldn't really put any photography equipment because this could drop easily. Now, the other thing that's pretty good on this bag it is a compartment which is right at the back here. So I have an iPad here, which I would normally use to view photos or show my clients. So I take a few shots, put on the iPad, scroll through, kind of show them the first uh, raw pictures, and uh, so and the space to have um, an iPad, a laptop. You could probably fit up to a 15, 15 inch. Not sure if a 17 inch laptop will fit in there, but 15 uh, definitely. Uh, top of the bag, now obviously we've got the, the slangs here, uh, again a little attachment that we use if you were attaching a tripod at the back, uh, so again that's something I've not used. The other thing that obviously all lower pores bags have is the rain cover. Okay? So I'm not going to go into too much details, you know how it works if you have uh, had a lower pro bag, so this covers the full bag. Again, handy, but uh, 
a bit of a pain if you need to get in and out of the bag. But uh, yeah, if you need protection uh, during a uh, rainy day, here it is. Now, the most exciting part is obviously getting inside the bag. Uh, if you would have seen my video that I probably posted a year to two years ago about the same bag, I had very difficult equipment at the time. Uh, I've upgraded a lot, so I'm just going to go through this in details. I will do a little close-up later on once I've passed uh, through all this. So first is my Black Rapid RS7 strap. Uh, I really, really like this uh, this strap. I find them very, very good, very easy to use. It's just so simple to just bring the camera up and down this way. I'm not going to go into too much details. If you want to find the review, let me know if you want to see me to do a review. So that's my second strap. So I've got a double strap here, which I keep at the front because I use it much less than this one and the front strap inside. Uh, nice Yoto rocket uh, cleaning with raw liquid and spud cloth. Uh, always handy to have something to clean your lens if you need to. I'll go through the uh, accessories first and I'll get on to the main compartment. Uh, remote control, uh, make is a Puture, uh, I think I've got this on eBay, used it a few times, uh, very handy. Uh, gels for the flashes, again very handy depending on the white balance you're using and depending on the lighting conditions. I've got a couple of adapters for the flashes, a couple of a few stands for the flashes. Okay, so let's start with the flashes. So I have one SB900 here, second SB900. Now the reason I've got them uh, with a red and a blue uh, plaster on front of it is because it's easy for me to recognize it. So I would use this one on group A, this one on group B. So when I control them from the camera, it's, uh, it's much easier, obviously. I know exactly which one I'm controlling. So that's the two SB900. Uh, <clears throat> uh, okay. I have the Pixel TD382, if, uh, if I think I'm right, which is a battery charger for one of the SB900. Um, I've only got one at the moment. I, I haven't had the necessity to get two. Uh, so that's the battery charger, which will recycle the flashes much quicker than it is. Uh, this will not solve the problem of um, overheating on the SB900. This uh, will actually make it worth, but if you need that speed for a short period of time, it's perfect. A uh, little lens wood with a 50 mm 1.8 Nikon. Batteries, well, plenty of batteries. Uh, the way I work is I have a box with ready on top of it and a box with dead. So when the ready are dead, well, they go into the dead box. So when I go back home after a, a photo shoot, I know exactly which one I need to charge. So these are the batteries. Business cards. And this. These are little bags of, you know, I don't know the name of it, but why it does, it cannot take any moisture from your bag. Uh, the color gets orange, and as it gets used, it goes into green. And to bring it back into orange, so it can take more moisture from your bag, you just put it in the cooker for around 20, 30 minutes, go back to orange, put it back in your bag, and it will just suck all the moisture, the humidity from your bag. Very handy if you're looking after your equipment. Uh, if you have, if you want me to put the link, just send me a quick uh, message. Now the exciting part is the obviously the equipment. So I've got my beloved Sigma 85 mm f1.4. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this lens. I've done the first review. I'm still waiting with this lens to uh, do a second review. I love this lens. If I had, if I, if I needed, if I had to take one lens with me out of all the bags, that would be the one. Uh, no hesitation. The creativity you can use with this lens is just amazing. I've got my Nikon 70 
to 200 mm VR2. Uh, again, no need any introduction. You all know what this lens can do. I've got then an Nikon D700 with a battery grip here. And I have my newest uh, acquisition, which is the Nikon D3 S, uh, which has the 24 to 70 millimeter on the other moment. Again, all this equipment obviously don't need any introduction. A few little, little bags. Uh, probably gonna have to do them again. So that is pretty much what I have on the. Uh, bottom part of the bag. So as you can see, you can fit quite a lot. You know, a 70 to 200, uh, two professional bodies, uh, an 85 millimeter, which is a medium size, and a 24 to 70, which is quite a large size. Plus two SB 900, a battery pack, two little box for my batteries, some business card, a 50 millimeter front on eight, and a black rapid strap. Get so. Another cleaning product, uh, remote control, gels, little equipment. Now, going on to the front part, you have one pocket here, which I would normally use for small equipment. Um, I'm not going to go into details. I've got the Hanel Giga T Pro, which I use to uh, control my camera from a distance. It's a good product. I've, Used it once during the Alloman TT racing. It didn't work so well for me, so the battery is now dead. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it's still here. So I've got the clip for the 70 to 200 millimeter. Uh, various various accessories. Filters which I would normally use in these pockets. Uh, and here I've got a, a battery, an extra battery for my D700. So that's one battery in the grip, one battery in the camera, and one extra battery. I'm uh, looking to get an extra couple, of, probably an extra one on a battery for the D3S uh, because the D3S can do can take about 4,400 photos with one charge. So you don't need many batteries. Uh, we're gonna have one just ready in case uh, there is something wrong with that one. But otherwise, I would just use the same one. And apart from this, uh, I also have my um, a little box that I keep with my memory cards, which will go inside the box. So I'm just gonna put everything back in there and show, give you a closer look of the bag. Okay, so just to give you a quick close up of the bag, so the pocket here where you put a tripod, which is the front, at the bottom here, you have the rain cover, which I won't get out now. Now, inside the bag, so you got the two pockets here at the top. Couple of little pockets here, which are rarely used because they're very small. Even if you put a memory card, it's not easy to get out. Uh, another pocket at the bottom here, and the inside. So let me see if I can give you a good aperture. Right. Okay. So obviously I've got my black rapid here with my gitzo. Under this is the 70 to 200 millimeter. I've got my first SV900 here. D3S with a 24 to 70, D700 with a grip, SB900 with the battery pack. I keep uh, one of the my business card under this SB900, 50 millimeter with the full batteries, ready batteries there, 85 millimeter 1.4 sigma, and that is pretty much it from the inside. So. Here we go. If you do have uh, any any question, let me know, and uh, I will try to do a couple of more review on the actual equipment I'm using. Uh, but if you have any question, or if you want me to review anything in the time being, let me know, and I'll be more than happy to do another video. All right.
Cheers. And don't forget to subscribe so you can obviously follow up on the next video I'm doing. I have a very exciting video coming up in the next couple of weeks which is going to be about the Brunizer method. Uh, I've done a lot of work on it. I've been working very hard to try to perfect it and get it right with the software, which software I'm using. Uh, please visit my website which is uh, www.lgmphotography.co.uk under the wedding section in my portfolio you will be able to see a few examples that I've done and uh, yeah I will be going through the full um, where on how on full method on, from the start from the equipment I use to do the photos then to process it on a computer and the final result so yeah stay tuned and uh, that's coming up cheers bye